Good morning. It is uh, Thursday, November 18th, 2021, and my name is John Gilkison, and uh, I wanted to shoot a short video for you this morning on aerodynamics, EVs, and towing with EVs. Um, I'm working on a PowerPoint, and I've decided to hand hold the camera this morning. So I'm just going to have to show you this. Uh, I'm not going to take you through the whole PowerPoint because we're not done with it yet. But there's a section in it which I'm particularly excited about, which I wanted to share with you. Now, right now we have, I don't know, 28 or so slides. And, and I have a few more to do. I have a, a road load graph for my Chevrolet Bolt which is uh, has a drag coefficient of uh, 0.308 and uh, I just don't have it yet by road load graph I mean a graph like this uh, and uh, Anyway, there's a three-dimensional model of a coefficient of drag that's really low. Um, and it goes through this. It's, it, we're explaining what the forces are that add up to road load and comparative uh, road load graphs. But we're interested in trailer towing. And this is a... Cybertruck's load, road load graph. Here's a homemade Chevrolet Bolt road load graph, which I made based on uh, readouts. And uh, my friend in Texas, Phil Knox, he's the aerodynamicist among us, is working up a real one, which is going to include rolling resistance. Um, but anyway... So we're explaining coefficient of drag area, so forth. Um, anyway, faster to speed, the more aerodynamics improves range. Here's a carpet graph. My new decals for our Chevrolet Bolt. And then this is important here. The semi truck's been using applied aerodynamics for decades. And uh, what we're basically talking about here is fairings and your fencings to blend the trailer into the truck. And this is uh, why when Bubba goes out and gets a trailer of some sort, uh, the results are abysmal. Because there are no aerodynamic appliances uh, to attach uh, to the tow vehicle to blend it in with the trailer. Or it's not thought about. And I'm, we're explaining trailer towing here as an aerodynamics problem. And I don't want to get into the weeds on this. But right here, at slide number 24, I'm talking about my fifth wheel, which this is a, a silhouette of. And it turns out that fifth wheels are better than uh, most trailers because the, uh, of the gap closure. Because the, the tongue of the trailer is over the rear axle, um, it brings the nose of the trailer closer to the cab and it closes this gap right in here. And um, so because of this gap closure, and another thing that you'll see on a lot of fifth wheel trailers is the roof line slopes downhill. On my trailer, for example, I have a hundred square feet of frontal area 
but I only have 64 square feet of wake area. So it's been bothering me for a long time with why uh, my truck gets 18 miles per gallon by itself, but when I tow my tra trailer, I only get nine miles per gallon. And yet the, the frontal area of the trailer is 2.7 times greater than the um, um, frontal area of the truck. And it weighs 9,000 pounds. It's got 1.5 times the mass of my uh, truck. And yet it has a wake area that's 1.7 times greater. And I end up with a uh, only requiring twice the energy to tow it, which is actually a good result when you think about it. And um, so for a long time, I've wondered what the hell is the coefficient of drag of my trailer truck combination. These things aren't published because uh, you cannot figure the coefficient of drag of a trailer in isolation. Without a tow vehicle, you uh, you don't know what the combination is like, and uh, you have to consider the tow vehicle and the trailer as one thing. So anyway, the math actually drops out pretty simple. If it's uh, requiring twice the fuel. If I can't get this held up to the camera here. Okay, excuse me. But if the frontal area is 36, this is the truck, times the coefficient of drag, 0 0.40, then the CDA, which I don't label here because I don't have room, is 14.4. Then if my frontal area is 100, X my CD, which I don't know, equals 28.8. And as you can see, 28.8 is twice 14.4. Well, then my coefficient of drag has to be 0.29. And this is because the road load is 2x. And I was startled when we when I came up with that uh, coefficient of drag from a truck trailer combination, because obviously it's, it's over a point lower than the truck is by itself. And this is an unexpected result. You just, when you look at it, you, you look at this giant trailer, you hook up with a hundred square feet of frontal area and you're thinking to yourself, Oh, well, I've really increased the drag, uh, of my rig. So of course I'm only getting nine miles per gallon. But you really just don't realize you don't have you don't have the numbers put to it that you've decreased the coefficient of drag, and that has to be so because if it only takes twice the energy to tow the thing down the road, and it has two point seven times the frontal area and one point five times the mass, then the coefficient of drag has to be lower. So I'm not saying this is official, this is the actual coefficient of drag of my vehicle, but I'm saying, uh, my combination, but I'm saying it's in that area. That's all I'm saying. And um, so I'll get into this uh, later. Because uh, I want to go through this whole slide set, and I will set up a tripod to do it. But, and this is a concept which I've been trying to get across to people for quite a while. It's actually possible to tow a trailer and increase the range of your vehicle. For example, we're showing a cyber truck here with a trailer with an accordion gap closure, and then the trailer itself. Uh, continues the boat tail effect and comes to nearly a point in the back. Of course, you have to have enough 
back there on the trailer for lights and and uh, a uh, license plate and so forth. But uh, other than that, you could uh, improve the range of the Cybertruck from 600 miles to 900 miles by towing such a rig and carrying more mass. And these are all counterintuitive things, uh, which we're trying to introduce uh, to people. Because when they discuss trailer towing, they just talk about mass and they never talk about aerodynamics or frontal area or anything, which is a primary consideration. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm already at over 10 minutes here. And it's going to take about 30 minutes to do this whole slide set. So happy sailing, everybody. Um, we'll see you on down the road. Bye-bye.